Line 10, say, welcome to another episode of UENPD TV. Line 20, if location equals true, Nebo View Elementary School, say, welcome to Nebo View Elementary School. And if you haven't figured it out yet, on this UENPD TV episode, we're gonna learn about coding. We're gonna go inside and see how fourth and fifth graders are using Scratch and other programs to teach computer science. Line 40, walk forward. So Heather Westring, thank you so much for letting us come visit your lab and see the students in action here at Nebo View Elementary School. I wanted to ask you uh, to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you became a lab technician and got interested in teaching kids to code. So it started as just a basic teaching kids to type and be on the computer, the basics of a computer. And a year and a half ago, the computer science was introduced and it's opened me up. So, so many things. You don't have a background in coding or any type of network administration or anything? You jumped into it with the kids? I jumped right in. <laughs> okay. Thinking about where would hide and show be? We've seen in some research that a vast majority of parents want their children to be offered computer science in school, but unfortunately, a minority of schools actually provide it. What yeah. kind of feedback do you get from the parents here in your community? The feedback I'm getting from them is, I didn't know my kid could do this. Mm. We have a couple teachers here that have kids in my classes and she's like, he showed me this project last night. How did you teach him, him to do that? Like, well, they do a lot of it on their own. I give them a topic and they roll with it. You told me that you have students that come to you and say, I'm working on this project for a different teacher or class and they want to use Scratch or Boot Up to make that project. Like, how long does it take before a kid can independently start creating on their own in these coding programs? That basically comes down to the student, where they're at academically. Mm -hmm. I have kids that can come in here and I put a topic up on the board and within 10 minutes they've created something amazing. Whereas I have the kids that need my one-on-one -on -one help. So some really quick, others it might take them all year to get that final project that they want. And you've been doing this for how many years now? Been in the lab five years, computer science with boot up and scratch for a year and a half. So sometimes you have students who are struggling academically with math or language arts, but then they get to come in here and do you see them being successful with coding? Yes, I mean, and it comes back to that student by student. Some of these kids that come in here are low in math or reading or something in class, but they come in here and they have this desire, this motivation that sparks them to do amazing things with computer science and coding. And they tell me they love it. I'm good at this, Mrs. Westring. Look at what I've done. Mm -hmm. They're excited and they've excelled in something and makes them want to accomplish more. Yeah, we saw a lot of independent problem solving and even some collaboration and then you brought the students back to, and allowed them to share what they had made. Mm -hmm. um, I could tell just by watching you in two lessons, you're doing a lot of really great things here with the kids and teaching them to be independent, self-reliant learners. Thanks for all that you do. So now we're inside at the Juab School District Innovation Center yes. with Crystal Bassett, who is an innovation specialist. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how this all got started, computer science and coding here in your school district. When we talk about innovation, one of the things that's a key component of my job is helping support teachers and students as they use technology. But we talk about using technology with intention, with impact. And one of those elements of impact is collaboration that can exist around computing science and, and just around learning in general. So we wanted a space that was a hub of all of those big ideas, those things we want students to do. So students currently in every grade level come into this space, this is Innovation Center. They bus in from their elementary schools and they work to extend their learning in the classroom. Innovation for me means changing the learning experience for students in a meaningful way. So we heard that you're using uh, scratch with your fourth and fifth graders and you're using Swift with sixth graders. How does yes. that work? That's on iPads, correct? Yes. So for Scratch, we 
we're looking for something that really was in line with our district mission and vision. And one of the key components of our personalized learning goal is flexibility, student choice and ownership. So Scratch felt like a good fit because really once you get in and engage in that space, students at any level can thrive. So I can be a new beginning coder and I can jump into Scratch and make it meaningful. We chose to go with the Swift program because all of our sixth graders have iPads. And so for that, they have the device in their hands. It still allows them to pace at their own pace, but the teacher has some, some oversight and some ability to lead them as they learn. And it gives our students just exposure to another platform. Still all the same thinking happens, but it lets them have a little bit of a break from scratch and then move forward. I noticed when the kids came into the computer lab, they logged onto a website. So Scratch is available online. Mm -hmm. They can access it from home, anywhere, just with their username and password? That's another reason we chose Scratch, um, because it's not limited. I mean, we are guaranteeing that these students get weekly computer science exposure, but we know absolutely that students are choosing to extend that outside of the classroom. And that's an exciting thing they do. They log in from home, they show their parents, they work with their siblings to create projects they're proud of. It goes outside of that Scratch computer lab. Scratch was made by MIT, correct? It is. So how much does it cost your school district to use Scratch? Scratch is free, open platform. So we've heard a lot about the benefits of teaching students coding, uh, the problem solving, the critical thinking, the collaboration mm -hmm. that spills over into other academic areas. Mm -hmm. But have you ever had any students that are struggling academically come into the computer science program and thrive there? One of my favorite moments came from a student who was only, we were a few weeks into the school year and it was a fifth grader and I'm a stranger, he's a stranger, we don't know each other and I walk into the lab and we were doing some, some model teaching and he turned to me and he said, I am really good at this, I'm good at this and I didn't know I could code and it was that moment that I thought, here we go, that's why. That's what we're doing and that's why we're doing it. Because it was such a, a celebration from this student who really probably hadn't had other areas that he's been able to shine like that. It was um, just one small moment that I think speaks to the bigger picture of what we're doing here. So a student goes through your school district, your program, and they graduate from high school. <laughs> Um, what kind of job opportunities are there for them in computing science and, and, and what are you looking to prepare them for? So one of our goals is to help our students be choice ready. So we want them to be ready for anything. College, career, military, whatever they decide. And one of the things that is kind of a continual part of our conversation that really even though computing science is maybe the, the path or one of the things we're doing to accomplish that. There are all of these other really important skills that surround computing science. So again, if I am here working in Scratch, I'm also receiving feedback on my work. And receptiveness to feedback is a life skill that these students are, are gaining. Or you have um, creative problem solving. That's going to help me in any job I have not just if I go and become a programmer. So we've seen some real success here uh, at, at the Innovation Center and at Nebo View Elementary School. Huh. Uh, and like you said, you've been at it for a couple of years, but if you could go back um, to the beginning, what advice would you give a school district that's just starting out? And, and what was it that kind of was the springboard for you? I think the springboard for us was saying our goal out loud. And once we did that, it started opening opportunities. So um, we had others reach out to us and say, hey, we, we know that Juab wants to get into the elementary computing science space. Have you thought about this or this or this? So we were almost handed um, resources to consider. So one of the things that got us where we are now, we had a computing, um, computing science partnership grant through the STEM Action Center, and that funded um, some of our computers, it funded our professional learning for our lab technicians, and it really gave us the spark and the springboard to keep moving forward. You told me that you got a STEM Action Center mm -hmm. grant and that you as a district sat down and set an intention. 
<laughs> but what are some of the pitfalls that you came across and how would you recommend a school district just getting started to avoid those? What, what tips and tricks would you share with them? So one pitfall is that just when you start talking about computing science, people become timid. Mm. Uh, teachers become scared. Students feel like they don't have a confidence in the space. So when we chose to design how we did with our lab technicians, we really went and approached those lab technicians who are risk takers. They are open to learning and that's the kind of teacher we needed to move the project forward. We did not need a scientist. We did not need a computer scientist. We needed someone who was willing, who could be enthusiastic, who could share their love of learning with students. So you have to be confident about making mistakes. Yes, <laughs> and as a program, some of, our, some of what we've done in our professional learning mm -hmm. is, has been designed to just help build confidence if it's not there, right? If we can build that confidence and capacity of our educators, we've got a program that can move forward. And we've built capacity and confidence of our students as well. So it sounds like it doesn't matter how much money or how many resources or how many computers you pour into the program. If you don't have people that are willing to take risks and make mistakes, it's not gonna succeed. I think computing science instruction is absolutely tied to risk taking and growth mindset. Line 50, turn right. Line 60 say, thanks for watching this episode of UEN PD TV. We've had a great time down here at the Juab School District, meeting with Crystal and Heather and learning about all the great stuff they're doing with computing science. And we hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube feed. And if you wanna take some of our UEN PD classes about computer science or anything with instructional technology, check out our website, uen.org slash register. See you next time.